Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be uh, joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and uh, bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing, yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming, it stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they that speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? <coughs> You see, this is, <coughs> this is speaking concerning Lucifer. He was lifted up with pride. He's known as the devil and Satan. It's the same person. He was lifted up with pride because of his beauty. And he thought that he could become as the Most High God. But that couldn't be. So as a result, he was thrown out of heaven. He was kicked out of heaven. The Lord kicked him out of heaven. This is Lucifer. And now he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you. He wants to deceive you. You see, the devil is a liar and the father of it. He invented lies, in fact. He's the one that came to Adam and Eve, or to Eve, and said, Yea, hath God said? He questioned what God said as a reality. Yes, God did say that if you eat of that tree, Thou wilt surely die. And yet, he threw doubt in the mind of Eve. And so she went ahead and, and partook of that tree that she shouldn't have. And then gave also to her husband, and he did eat. And then they realized they were both naked, and they hid themselves. And then they made uh, aprons of, um, out of fig leaves. But these aprons were no good. They could not hide their, their nakedness. Now they were naked in two ways. They were naked physically, but also spiritually. You see, there was a separation made between God and man at that point, when Adam and Eve sinned. 
You see, our sins have hid the face of God from us, that he will not hear, and yet there's one way back to God from the dark paths of sin, and that way is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us when he was crucified upon the cross. You see, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. He's the one that desires your eternal well-being, your eternal blessing, that you would receive eternal life through faith alone in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What you need to do, you need to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> yes, we read in uh, verse 17 of Isaiah 14 that made the world as a wilderness, this is Lucifer, and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. The devil does not want to let go of you. And you and I are prisoners of, of uh, the devil if we're not saved, if we're not children of God. We are heading down to hell. And the devil is going down to the lake of fire and brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And he wants to take as many people as he can with him. Why go there when there's no need? The Lord Jesus Christ has died upon the cross so that you and I could be forgiven for all of our sins. You and I need forgiveness, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why I'm here this afternoon, I want you to know that your soul can be saved. You can have peace with God, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you're not saved, you remain in a lost condition going down to hell into the judgment of Almighty God because your sins have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon that your sins can be forgiven and that's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us. God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Change your mind, agree with God that you're a sinner. <coughs> and then you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes? <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, the war was, a war was raging at the place called Calvary. And the Lord Jesus Christ has gotten the victory over the devil. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ could not stay dead in the tomb. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. It may have been that the devil thought that he had won that battle. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ, who, although he was crucified, although he died that day upon the cross of Calvary, he was risen again from among the dead on the third day. He's a living, loving Saviour, as I keep on saying. He wants to save you. He wants your soul to be saved. You, you can be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, the devil doesn't want to let you go. He op openeth not, says here, he opened not the house of the prisoners. You see, the devil has got you right where he wants you if you're not a child of God, if you're not saved. He's deceiving you. He's a liar and the father of it. He invented lies. He wants to take you down to the lake of fire with himself. No need to go there though. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through faith? in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Without Him, we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins, heading for the judgment of God in that terrible place called hell. And eventually the lake of fire for all eternity. It's not worth it. 
God has made the way of escape through his Son, Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The question is, do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? See, without him, as I said before, we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins. Going down to that terrible place called hell. And God does not want any of us to go there. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply come to God and agree with him. Yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. Just be honest before God. There's no way that anyone can hide anything from the God of heaven. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. Knows everything, what's going on in our hearts. In our innermost being, we cannot hide anything. You see, God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, the Bible says, according to my gospel. And the gospel is this, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the good news concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save you right now, that you would become a child of God through faith, in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Don't leave it another second. Your soul is in the balance here. The well-being of your soul. It's either heaven through faith in Jesus Christ as your Saviour, or it's down in the lake of fire for all eternity. If you die without Christ as your Saviour, your opportunity will be over and gone forever. If you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. You might not understand that, but you're in great danger. And the devil, as I said before, the devil is deceiving many thousands and millions of people into having a good time and at the end it'll be alright. Well, it won't. And in this country, they say, she'll be right, mate, it won't be. Because you and I are heading for the judgment of God. For the wages of sin is death. And that's the bad news. But the good news is this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I wonder are you prepared to call upon the name of the Lord to become a child of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you and I could be delivered from that hard taskmaster, that is, the devil. The devil wants to deceive you and he probably has deceived you. I want to continue reading now in verse 18 of Isaiah 14. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet, thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people and the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, 
because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth the cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina, art dissolved, for there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. I wonder, are you prepared to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you are, you'll be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. You can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, is your soul saved this afternoon? Do you walk down the street or you sit in your car? Are you ready to meet God? Prepare to meet thy God, the Bible says. And be sure your sin will find you out. You see, there's a payday coming someday. someday and we've got to understand that we're in trouble. We're in big trouble with God because of our sins that have not been forgiven, if that's your case this afternoon. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon that your sins can be forgiven. And on one basis and one basis only, that is the finished work and the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he shed for us abundantly upon the cross of Calvary, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. I wonder, is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And here's the reason, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So we need to understand that we're in sin. We are sinners in the sight of God when we're born into this world. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We're all in the same boat. We need God's salvation urgently. If you were to die right now, where would you be? Heaven through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ or down in hell because you've rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are made up of a spirit, soul and body. Contrary to the, the thoughts of some people, they think that we're just a body. That's not true. We have a spirit, a soul and a body. And that soul and body goes out into eternity at the moment of death. Where will you be five seconds after you die? We're not just a body that we make so much fuss of. The things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. As I said, we have a spirit and soul inside of our body that goes out into eternity. Eternity where? Will it be in heaven? The only way it can be in heaven is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The question was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Without faith in Christ we're heading down to hell. Yes, what we need is repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Remember for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Isaiah chapter 24, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be, um, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, or interest, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets, all joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as a shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is gone. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously, yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who feedeth from the noise of the fear, or sorry, fleeth from the noise of the fear, shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on, on, from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Isaiah 25, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city an heap, of a defence city a ruin, a, pl a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall a strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. 
Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low, and in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines and of lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees will refine. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death, death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have fainted, waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, and as, that, uh, and as that swimmeth, spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands, and the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. Isaiah 26, In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. And open ye the gates that, are, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy um, judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favour be showed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly, and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see, and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have had domain, uh, sorry, dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. They are dead, they shall not live. They are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Thou hast increased the nation, O Lord, Thou hast increased the nation, thou art glorified. Thou hast removed it far uh, unto all the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them, like as a, as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out uh, in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. 
Thy dead men shall live together, together uh, with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Now this is coming in a day to come. The Lord will punish this world for their wickedness, for their transgression. And this world will be dissolved. There will be a new heaven, a new earth, and all those sorts of things. But wherein dwelleth righteousness. But you and I have to realize the big problem that we have, and that big problem is sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of those sins, we're heading down to hell. And God does not want us to go to hell, and that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. You see, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. But is he your Savior? You need to make him your Savior this afternoon. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. At the moment of death, it's either heaven or hell. What will it be for you? It's all de determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now these girls reckon that they want to go to hell. Now why? Why go to a bad place of suffering and burning and torment? There's no need for that. God has made the way of escape through his son Jesus Christ. A place of absolute perfection. A place called heaven. And God wants us to be in heaven. He doesn't want us to go down to hell where there's eternal burnings. Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? There's no need for that. Girls, you need to make an, an assessment. You need to make a decision. Either believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be in heaven as a result, or reject the Lord Jesus Christ, and this goes for all of us, and we'll be in hell. It's very simple. Very simple. Sorry, if a murderer what? If a murderer kills somebody, yep. would they believe in God? Would they go to hell or heaven? If they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they'd be in heaven. Oh my God! What the fuck? What the hell? What the hell? Yes, it all depends on your decision for or against the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through repentance toward God that is a change of mind and then agree with God that you're a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yes, why go down to hell when there's no need? You can be in heaven through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day He rose again according to the Scriptures. Your eternal destiny depends on what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God as a result of faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Remember, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Don't leave it another second. You need salvation. You need salvation right now. Otherwise, it's damnation. It's either salvation or damnation. It's either eternal life or eternal death. Eternal punishment in the lake of fine brimstone, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Why go there when God has made provision for your salvation? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.